<laughs> Listen to my podcast about sports, about sports, about sports. Howdy, Ags. AP from the tailgate, home of Aggie football, brought to you by Freedom Homes, building Aggie dreams. Visit them at freedomhomes.com. Check them out. Everybody loves their homes. Folks, don't forget to email us at agstailgate at gmail.com. Don't forget to subscribe to the YouTube channel. Watch us on YouTube. Uh, listen to us on Spotify, on Apple Podcasts, whatever it may be. Uh, send us some commentary. Let us know what you think. Let's start today with some comments from the tailgate. Alex Smith says we suck. Thanks for that, Alex. Mo Money, our our Bama follower. Uh, He says he cannot wait for Saturday. (laughs) Uh, Out of blame. Uh, Pete O'Neill appreciates that he's got some company in crying over this football team. Uh, One Sip Dip says he's done. It's been all hype his entire life. Very frustrated. Cody Scherer comments that this offense, Jimbo's offense specifically, or Jimmy's offense, was at one point successful in the history of football. Maybe back when defenses used to really focus on stopping the run. Big, big defensive linemen, big linebackers. Uh, This offense was successful against that sort of defense. That's what his take is. Uh... But he doesn't believe that things are going to get much better this year because the scheme's not going to change this year. So, looking forward to the same things. Taylor Berry says he's a huge Aggie fan. Loves the podcast. Thank you, Taylor. Love it. Uh, We'll continue to tell. We're going to continue to tell it how it is around here. Uh, And then I'd like to say hello to a couple of new subscribers. Eddie Hernandez, Carmen Cisneros, John Casperson. Thank you for subscribing. Folks, join the group. We'll throw you a shout out. Uh, So there's been a ton of negativity. A ton of negativity surrounding this program. And so today I'm going to turn over a new leaf. Does that mean that I'm going to go Jimmy is my daddy and there's nothing wrong around here? Absolutely not. You guys know you've been listening to this podcast, I try to tell things how they are. I try to look at the game, watch the game, see what goes wrong, explain what's going wrong, some of the reasons it's going wrong. I'm not going to sugarcoat things, though. I'm not going to be tech sacks. That is all rainbows and unicorns, right? That's not my, that's not going to be my thing. So, but having said that, we're going to turn a new leaf today as we go into the Alabama game for Saturday. We'll dig into that in just a minute. First, I want to talk a little bit about ESPN had an article up and specific, specifically about Jimmy, about our, our head football coach, Jimmy Fisher, and what's going on there. And there were a couple of interesting quotes in the article, specifically um, a, a coach that worked with Tom Osborne, famous Nebraska coach, and he says, as a young coach, Tom Osborne gave me a piece of advice I never forgot. He said, when times get tough, and they will, get out your eraser, not your pencil. The reason this quote caught me, and I wanted to share it here, is because this is the same philosophy that I think most great coaches use, right? Most great coaches understand that when the players are not executing, when the players are not executing and there's a hard time being fought out there, right? Having struggles. You don't sit there, draw up new plays and new plays and new plays to target the things that you want to attack. What you do is you go back and you just start getting rid of a bunch of plays. And then you focus in on what you're really good at. And you get better and better at that. You develop what they call an identity. And you use that identity to your strength. 
Once you're good at that, then you can have wrinkles off of your identity. That's how you become a good football team. There was also another co- another coach that was talked to here. Uh, one coach said the pressure to break out of a slump can sometimes cause coaches to dig too deep in the playbook instead of pulling back. That's what he sees in watching Jimbo call a game. Another one, simplicity is what makes great offense. It's the ability to execute. I think that's their issue. I turn the film on, I'm not quite sure what they're trying to do. They have, They don't have an identity, and you have to have something that you can bank on. I just don't see that. So he basically says, I believe they ran four plays the whole game, two passes and two runs. They would beat Appalachian State by 40. So I, I think you I think you're sort of getting the picture here, right? Or at least some of what people are saying with regards to this offense. You know, instead of simplifying, we're just continuing to add more into the mix, which, once again, is making the problem worse, right? What you need to do is make the players comfortable. And, you know, it's interesting, you know. (laughs) Uh, Oh, Jimmy. Oh, Jimmy starts his press conference by saying, hey, our guys just need to relax. And then when somebody says, what do you do to help them relax? He says, oh, no, it's not relax. So is it relax or is it not relax? All right, I'm turning a new leaf. I'm turning a new leaf. I'm turning a new leaf. All right, let's, it's going to be hard to turn a new leaf here today. But we're going to do this. A couple of things. A couple of things. Now, this is the game of the year. Right? Everybody had this thing circled since the beginning of the season. Oh, wait till we get to Alabama. You know, Jimmy and Nick have been squabbling all off season. This is going to be great. Awesome game. Well, Ags didn't hold up the end of the bargain. They lose to Appalachian State. They lose to Mississippi State. Um, sort of takes a little bit of the luster from this game, right? We go to Alabama this week. Obviously, it's the revenge game for, for Bama. We beat them last year here at home. Now we're going to Tuscaloosa. They're 5-0. and Wins over Utah State, the University of Texas, ULM, Vandy, and Arkansas. They whooped up on Arkansas, 49-26. Very unexpected um, from me. I thought Arkansas would do a better job of sticking with the run game and, and sort of sticking with, with what they do well. I thought they got away from that. I thought they started to get away from that in the game against the Aggies after the fumble for a touchdown. And that continued, I thought, against Alabama. Having said all that, the tide comes in undefeated. And not only that, but they're getting better and better, right? They barely beat Texas. They barely beat Texas. Uh, But they beat them. They beat them. Maybe, you know, it takes a great performance by Bryce Young there towards the end of the game to get that done. End of the day, they get it done. They get come out of there with a win, and they continue to improve every week. Sure, after Texas, let's say ULM is not great. Let's say Vandy is really not great. Arkansas is a little bit better, but they clearly have gotten better and started to execute more. If you watch that Arkansas game, they knew exactly what they wanted to do, right? Something we talked about here on the tailgate about how to attack Arkansas. Go attack their safeties. And boy, did they. Boy, did they. They burnt them safeties all day, every day. Um, So, my boy Nick's been listening to the pop. Games at 7 p.m. on CBS, by the way, just in case you wanted to know where it's broadcast. All right, so, you know, these guys are averaging 48 points a game. They're only allowing 11 a game. Offensively and defensively, they're starting to play a lot better. Uh, Let's start with the offense. Let's start with the offense. Look, very multiple in their formations. They love to bring in two backs. They they use the tight end a ton. 
Um, but they like to do a lot of different formations with, you know, moving the wide receivers from, you know, maybe a, a bunch set to, you know, spread out to bringing them in tight. Uh, they, like, they use little short motions. Um, so really and truly a lot of different formations that they want you to prepare for with different back sets. Uh, they'll have a fullback sometimes, or they'll put that tight end in sort of a fullback position. Um, so they'll do a lot of different things that you need to prepare for as a defense. What do you do as a defense to handle those kinds of things? Well, you simplify. Once again, we get back to this coaching philosophy. Simpler the better, right? Because if you're simple, no matter what they do, your rules can hit you. You apply your rules to that, to that for to whatever it is, right? but only one set of rules. That way your players don't have to think. They know they're right. They play in sound football and then go play in attack, especially defensively. Um, look, the other thing that these guys do a great job of with, lots of RPO, lots of play action passes. They like to boot, get the quarterback out from behind that offensive line, which has had some issues. Uh, they implement the screens very well whether to the backs or to the wide receivers in tunnels. They like to use the double move. Jimmy, are you listening? Some of the double move, right? Rub routes and different pick routes with regards to those formations. We talked about some of the bunch sets using guys to get open. And then if you're going to show blitz, they've got pretty good athletes on the outside, and they're going to use the quick slant to get them the ball and let them go make a play, right? These are all a lot of different concepts that they take in and use, but you know, they got a guy in Young who has been doing this for a year, won the Heisman, and runs this offense to perfection. On a play-by-play -play basis, it's very simple as far as where his reads are. The RPO, he's reading the run, or he's throwing in right behind it, right? You know, a lot of the screen game, simple, simple reads. Um, Pre-snap reads for the majority of them on the screen game, right? The double moves, that's something that comes in, pretty simple. Once again, look off, maybe pump fake it, and let it go. So a lot of those schemes, a lot of those things, the play action in the boots, sitting with you know a guy in the flats maybe a guy over the top they'll do some throwbacks to come off of that right all though but all those things are related and if you look at the the what they have in common is it's really not a ton of reads and changes from the receiver standpoint in their routes there's not a lot of reads for the quarterback a lot of those things are just built into the system so they take advantage of those things Look, Bryce Young is obviously a beast. The dude is a monster. If you let him, he will sit in there and pick you apart. If you do what we did last week, bring three in pressure and give him all day to throw, he's going to pick you apart, no matter how many folks you've got in coverage. Jalen Milrow. Now, Bryce got hurt last, last week, right? So what happens? Jalen Milrow. Well, <laughs> Jalen's a, a dude, too. Now, he's a very different dude than, than Bryce. Bryce is going to pick you apart. Jalen's an athlete. That dude is built like a linebacker. He's 220 pounds and athletic as can be. The dude can run. He will make plays with his legs. And when you combine him and the tailbacks, Gibbs, McLennan, boy, they can give you a hard time in the run game. A real hard time. You know, if you, you are not disciplined in your rush lanes, if your linebackers are not disciplined in fitting their gaps, then all of a sudden you've got a real problem trying to defend a running quarterback and two tailbacks that can both make plays. Then add the fact that all of a sudden Gibbs can go out and catch pass, get into the routes, and is a pretty good playmaker in the passing game. To add to that, they'll do it with a tight end to create some different services. They'll do it out of two backs. 
create some different surfaces. Um, and then they're going to play action. And the wide receivers who struggled early in the season, you saw them struggle mightily against Texas. Some of those guys are starting to come into their own. They were young, young wide receivers that still had some growing to do. But all of a sudden, you get guys like Prentice. Bond goes off against Arkansas with some big plays. You know, but a couple of guys that really started to show out right there, you know. But those aren't the only ones. I mean, they've got Holden, Prentice, Gibbs. I have all caught over 200 yards receiving. They've all caught over 15 passes. But they've got six different guys or seven different guys with over 100 yards receiving. Six, five different guys, six different guys with over 10 yards, 10 passes caught. You know, so they they will distribute the ball. They'll get it out to a bunch of different guys and let those guys make plays. Up until last week, it wasn't the explosive play. But last week, it started to look like some of those explosive plays were coming. Now, what they do, they did what we talked about the week before. They went and attacked the safeties, the weak point of that defense for Arkansas. All right, what, who are they going to attack against us? Well, that's the key. So what does the Aggie defense have to do to slow this group down? One is you have to get pressure with four. You have to get pressure with four. And that means you got to get out of this three-man line set because they will kill you win the running game if you stay in a three-man line. They are just going to kill you. You got to bring four and let that front four control the running game and get pressure on Young, especially. If Young is the guy, if he's back, you need to be able to control him with four. Because if you start bringing way too much pressure otherwise, six guys, he will find the open guy and get you. Right? He will find the open guy and get you, especially if you leave him space. He can get rid of the football, he can hit the slant really on a quick little slant that goes for 60 because he's precise when he's passing and he'll read the pressure. So you've got to get pressure with four. The other thing that you need to do defensively is you can't give up the big play. They absolutely, absolutely live off the big play, right? To them, that is, there is no better thing. So... That's going to change momentum. That's going to change everything that's going on. You have to eliminate the big play over the top, which means you got to keep a safety deep. Whether it's Gilbert or Antonio Johnson, it can't be Richardson. Why? Because Richardson is not that guy. That is not him. You got to bring Richardson into the box and let him play. That's the way it works. That is where his strengths are. Let him play. Gilbert, Antonio Johnson can be your guys over the top. Let them play. Let them go make a play out in, out in the open against some of these wide receivers. Use, use your cover guys, Chappelle, Jones, George, Harris had a good game last week. Yeah, sure, he got beat on a couple of ones, but he's right there. He was right there. Big time play by the receiver. Dude made some plays. Let those guys cover. Let them do what they do. Have a little support over the top with that safety. Let them be aggressive. Don't give up the quick, the little quick hitters for free. Don't give up the, the wide receiver screens for free. But have some support over the, over the top because they love the big play. They feed off of it. So those are some of the things that they need to do. They're going to have to do that. You have to win some one-on-ones against the offensive line because that offensive line's got issues. They're not great up front. They've got to win some one-on-ones up front. That means you got to put your big boys up there. Let Walter Nolan go. Let Rakes and Turner and Diggs and Stewart. Overton has looked really good. Malik Silla, Silla last week looked explosive. Let those guys get out there. On third down, put four of them out there that can run. Diggs, Overton, Stewart, and Silla. 
all at the same time. Use the players that you got and give them an opportunity to be successful. But keep it simple. Don't run 17 different things, right? Have your base, four, two, five, with a little bit of some wrinkles in your blitzing schemes that you're gonna use on third down. Come and play. Force them to make plays. Don't give up the cheap ones. Right? Force them to continue down the field. March, march, march. But you're gonna to have to be stout. If you walk in there with a three-man line, Alabama will pound you. They'll pound you into submission. All right, let's move on. How about their defense? So their defense is interesting too because their base is a 3-4. But these days, a lot of times that converts into a 4-2-5 with Anderson coming in as the fourth lineman, you know, getting out of that 3-4. Um, they'll also use some 3-3, right? Both outside linebackers in there and, and playing. So, you know, that'll give, that gives them some ability to do some more uh, sort of different blitzes and blitz packages. Uh, try to do some more. They slant, they stunt. Uh, they do all those things, right? They're going to try to confuse you. They've seen our offensive line struggle with slants, struggle with stunts, tr struggle with twists. The inside linebacker blitzes have, have given those guys trouble because we struggle on the inside of our offensive line. Bryce, Aki, two specific guys that, that are in that group. Maybe it's a good idea to see if Foster can move out to guard, wipe off at center, and you know get get Aki off the field at times. See if there's another guy there. Point being is that's where the struggles have been. That's where the that's where I expect them to attack. They're gonna show some different looks in that. They've done that all year already, but they're gonna use those techniques in order to give us trouble up front, while not necessarily always bringing multiple guys so six or five right they can do it with four they can do it with four and move those guys around loop them you know with the defensive tackles with the defensive ends do some things there that's gonna that that's gonna give the offensive line trouble or that has given the offensive line trouble in the past so they need to be very uh aware of what's going on but not only that you know, up front, these guys are okay. Take Anderson out of the group. The defensive line holds up against the run okay. You know, but they're not havoc creators. They're not big-time playmakers. They're not just going to, you know, blow up a play on their own. Anderson, yes. Moody, the other linebacker, pretty darn good at, at doing some of that. You know, but they've got some guys... Otherwise, that are just sound defensive line. So now, what do you got to do? You got to control Bryce Anderson, right? You got to control Anderson because Will Anderson, not Bryce Anderson, Bryce Young. Will Anderson. You got to control Will Anderson because Will Anderson is going to be, you know, one of the top guys in the draft this coming year. He is that level of ball player. He's got five sacks already this year. That number is going to grow. Five sacks and I think nine tackles for loss already through five games. You know, that got numbers, those numbers are just going to continue to grow. He had a little bit of a slow start for, to the season. He's getting better. He's going to continue to be a play record. That's one of those things. But it's not one of those situations where you can try to just run away from him because he's got a motor, right? He's got a motor, which means he's going to chase things down from behind. You better block the dude. You better block the dude. So how do you neutralize this? Well, all right. Let me follow that up with, before I get to how to neutralize them, secondary-wise is where their weaknesses are, right? They've got some weaknesses in coverage. So they've got a lot of work to do to get better there. Their coverage schemes have had some holes in them especially because they bring some defenses and they blow some things. So you've got to be able to attack that secondary. So does that mean let's throw the football? Well, well, well. You've got to neutralize first the 
the pressure up front and the havoc up front. How do you do that? Use your tight ends, use two back sets, create multiple multiple front multiple fronts and looks for that for that defense up front. Also for the offense, different surfaces that you can help get double teams with. Create different surfaces so that you can control the pressure. Use the tight end. Move the tight end from time to time. Put the second back in the backfield. Help with some of the uh, uh, pressure and pick up on the blitzes. Uh, use two backs, no tight ends. You know, because those two backs can really adjust to where the blitz is coming from. Um, but use them in the running game, too. Get those guys in there. Run the power. You know, block down on the front side. Kick out with your guard. Pulling up through with the tight end. Pulling up through with the fullback. Getting in there. And getting downhill with a chain. Downhill off a cutback. Right, if they're over pursuing, run the power. If you're going to run the sweep, don't pull your play side. Tackle, center, and backside tackle, and ask your backside guard to reach a nose. That's just setting him up for failure. Keep your center in, block the nose, keep your backside tackle at home to block the backside defensive end. And pull your two guards. Why? Why, you ask? Because that backside defensive end in a 3-4, in a three-man scheme, is already in tight head-on on the tackle. If that tackle pulls, he's right in the play. He's coming with S. A. Chain, who got introduced to the backside defensive end in the sweep play last week. So adjust your blocking schemes to fit a three-man line, which you're going to see a lot of. Or, or simplify, simplify, simplify. Stick with the inside zone, the power, and maybe an outside zone. That's it. That's it. Keep it simple. Don't have 17 pass protections. Keep it simple. Where those guys know exactly what they're looking for. Who are they looking at? Where is everything coming from? What are they responsible for? Because the once you start checking and checking and checking and different things, those guys are lost. Those guys are lost. Next thing you know, they're allowing a the linebacker to come free uh, and trying to pick up the next guy. Or leaving the defensive lineman to come free while they try to pick up a linebacker. That's not good football. That's not good football. Simplify. Make sure the offensive line knows what they're doing. That is number one. Forget everybody else. The offensive line doesn't know. We don't know. The play is not going to be successful. Take care of that. So what do we have to do? Neutralize the pressure. Neutralize the pressure. Running the ball, multiple tight end sets, multiple back sets. Different surfaces, right? Different surfaces to get double teams. Create the double teams. Based off of based off of formations. Then attack the secondary. Attack the secondary. How do you do that? Well, first things first, you have to slow the pass rush down. How do you slow the pass rush down? Well, draw plays. Love the draw plays. Get Will Anderson up the field, run right underneath them. You may not even have to block them then. Draw plays are a great way. Screens, inside screens specifically, great way to get that slow down that pass rush. The play action, use the boot to get the quarterback out from behind the offensive line and away from that pressure. All of these things are ways to neutralize some of that pass rush. Once you're started to neutralize that pass rush, think about a double move. Attack the secondary. Double move. Well, you can't protect. Well, how about this? Max protect the double move. Max protect the double move. Why? Because, end of the day, you're one on one. Those cornerbacks, right now, have seen and watched the tape from the last few weeks. They know that everything we do is first, first move on those receivers. First move on those receivers. Double move. Bump it. Get over the top. It's an easy read. There is no questions. 
Know what you see, see what you know, all right? And so that's some of the things that they've got to do, though. But they've got to set it all up. When you go play action, attack the, attack the middle of the field. When you see them bringing a blitz and there's nobody from you to the goalpost, run a slant. Just simple things. Attack the secondary. All right. So that's what we need to do offensively. Predictions. Who's the offensive player of the game going to be? Well, this is an easy question because it's the same guy every week. We know it's A-chain. A-chain, A-chain, A-chain. And this week, because they have to control, they have to control the pass rush, it has to be A-chain. Now, off of that, some of the receivers are going to have to make some big plays. Don't be surprised. Moose has another big game, especially attacking the, the secondary, attacking the, the safeties in, in coverage, which is a weakness, right? Attacking those safeties in coverage. Um, but A-chain is going to be the offensive player of the game. Defensive player of the game, it's going to be Antonio Johnson. Now, I'm going to tell you why it's going to be Antonio Johnson. Because this is Antonio Johnson's opportunity to show out for the scouts. There's going to be a lot of NFL folks looking at all the Alabama players and all that stuff. Antonio Johnson wants to get his name out there. He is ready. And the dude's going to show out. Antonio Johnson, defensive player of the game. Bama's favored by 24. The over-under is 51. <sighs> Bama favored by 24. Well, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I expect, look, I'm not going to sell you. I'm not trying to sell you something here, you know, maroon colored glasses and all. Uh, I don't think that the Aggies are going to win this game. Let me be clear about that. I don't think that Jimbo has – I think the talent – we've got the talent to win this game. I don't think Jim B, Jimbo has made the adjustments necessary to win this game. Uh, I don't think Durkin is going to make the adjustments necessary to win this game. Another poor, poor performance by Durkin this past week. I don't think he's going to do it. So do I think that we're going to win this game? No. I think we're going to come out in a three-man line and they're going to run the football down our throats. I don't know that it's going to be 24 points. If they get to 24, it's late in, late in the game. Um, but I do think 20 is probably very, very believable. So I wouldn't be surprised if we lost this game by 20. And over under 51, uh, I would say under. I'd say under because I still don't expect these guys to uh, – because I, I don't expect Alabama to score 50. <laughs> and our offense is still, still struggling. So, I don't know, 35 to 14. What does that get us to? 49? So maybe it goes over. I don't know. It's a close over under. I wouldn't – I'm not as sure as that on this one. <laughs> as I have been in the past. Uh, question from Tailgate, brought to you by Carney's Pub and Grill. Good times, good drinks, good people. Question number one. By the way, everyone, I'm just sitting here uh, reading off my notes here on the pad. Everyone has already thrown in the towel on the season. What does this team need to do to be successful the rest of the way? One thing and one thing only. One play at a time. That's it. Get better one play at a time. Uh, everybody has room to improve. Offensively, defensively, special teams are special teams. was horrible, horrible, horrible. Uh, everybody has room to improve. Get better. One play at a time, get better. One practice snap at a time, get better. You know, some folks, some folks are always focused on game day, game day, game day. Teams don't get better on game day. They get better on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. That's when they get better. So the goal for each one of these guys should be get better every day. 
Because at the end of the day, that's the only thing you can control. That's the only thing you can control. As Aggie fans, me personally, look, if we're playing pretty good football by the end of the year, at least I can breathe easy. I can breathe easy. You know, this thing has, there's a chance. There's a chance, right? Get better every play. Get better every play. That's what they need to accomplish. That's what they need to focus on. Don't get, don't, don't have to get, you know, a playbook the size of a phone book, right? You don't have to see Jimbo out there with a notebook and then seven other pieces of paper stuck out of his pockets and all this stuff running around that he's trying to, you know, forget that. The pirate on his press conference said, oh, we knew exactly what they were going to do. He walked out with his little note card about three by five. And he called his plays right off that note card. <laughs> he is an enter entertaining interview. Go listen to that one because he'll tell you a lot of what he thinks about Jimbo on that one. Uh, question number two, everyone talks about how young this team is. That's, is that an excuse? Youth is not an excuse for a coach that has been here for five years. Not only that, the fact of the matter is, secondary, five regulars in the secondary that are three, third year or more. Five regulars in second, third year or more. That doesn't include Chappelle, who started over a year's worth of games. In your starting five in the secondary, Gilbert is the only one that hasn't started at least a year's worth of games. All linebackers, all the linebackers that have played, by the way, are at least third year or more. On the defensive line, Diggs, third year. Rakes, third year. I know McKinley's still not playing. Third year. Uh, Darius Jones, where's he at? But, you know, there's a bunch of guys. There's some guys up front also with a group of five stars behind them that are second year. Delier, Turner, Burris. Regis is another guy that's so all those guys have been here for over a year. And then a group of five-star freshmen in behind it. So are we a little young at times in, this, in the defensive line? Maybe. But that's the most talented group in the country. Most talented group in the country. Let the older guys play. Rotate in some of the younger guys. And you've got experience at all the other levels. So don't tell me about the youth on this defense. Don't tell me. Offensively, both of your quarterbacks, third-year guys. Your tailback, third-year guy. By the way, they got another another one, uh, another one that's also a third-year guy plus a couple of sophomores. So guys that have gotten game reps at tailback. Tight end, you got a fifth-year guy. In Max Wright. Yeah, sure, the other guy's a freshman, Green, sure. He's already a better blocker than he's already a better blocker than Widermeyer. And he's already starting to grow into his athleticism and playmaking ability on that on that offense. He's made some nice catches. He you can he's a natural route runner in those things. At the wide receiver position, sure. We've got two guys at Marshall and Stewart to get a ton of playing time as freshmen. That ain't that is not their fault. <laughs> Jimmy has chosen to start the freshman because Preston is out there, who's a proven playmaker. Go watch the LSU, LSU game last year. Moose Muhammad is a proven playmaker. Go watch him last year and uh, the game last week. You know where he made some big plays. I think he's made the, some of the biggest plays this receiving group has made. Chase Lane is an older guy. Price is a third year guy. Uh, Jackson is a third-year guy, um, you know, and obviously we're not even talking about a nine, so we just lost. Yo, Keith Brown is in his second year. So, yeah, there's the freshman, Stewart, Marshall, Noah Thomas, don't forget about him. But, boy, there's a ton of other receivers there that he could put on the field and that are experienced and have been around this program for a while. If he doesn't develop them, that's a different story. He didn't develop them. That's a different story. Then offensive line wise, the last. One. But your right guard Robinson is a senior. 
right? Foster and Fathery have both started more than years with the games. Trey Zune, it hasn't been the problem this year. He's playing pretty well, even though he's the fresh starter. Aki has had a bunch of starts prior to this year, and this year has played some. Now he's struggling, right? So you got to find somebody for that spot. How about Wyckoff? Wyckoff at center and Foster over at guard. Probably, maybe that's a better combination. But Foster, for, forget about the snaps and just focus in on being a, a greater, a road grader. Take care of that, right? Don't tell me that it's youth. If it is youth, simplify. Simplify, simplify, simplify. Make it easy on them and let them go play. Either way, to Tuscaloosa we go, baby. Let's go Aggies. Giggle. AP, signing out from the tailgate. Holler at you.